Hello and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm happy to see ya. <laughs> it's good to be back, you guys. Today I'm gonna film for you just a little bit of an update. I'm in the process of getting ready for the day. Let's address the elephant in the room. The elephant is my center part. <laughs> I tried something new yesterday with this center part business. Listen, I've tried this like three other times. Every other time I'm like, oh my gosh, I look... Like a Russian man? I'm not a fan, you know what I'm saying? It looked bad, okay? It'll look a lot better once I take my braids out, which I'm gonna do for you guys. I'll show you how I styled it yesterday, which I was in love with. I felt like a bougie little bitch, I won't lie. I'm gonna show you guys what Rosalie's playing with right now. She's having a blast in here. Rosie, what you playing with, honey? Wow, what are you building? Apartment. An apartment? Are your friends gonna live in it? Yeah. Oh. It's a building set. This is the brand, in case you guys were wondering. She told me not to touch it, but she's got ideas of her own. Always. Miss Independent, huh? Yes. <laughs> like drumsticks. They are like drumsticks. Oh. <laughs> I save this because, you know, we paint the most random things in this house. I'll show you guys other things. You're gonna laugh. This is really random. Um, but I saved this egg carton because I think that would be fun to paint for her, for three-year-old. So this contraption that I've made here. So this lovely contraption that I've made is actually supposed to be a swing set. I couldn't find my glue gun anywhere to glue these together. So this was our swing. I'll glue these things on and Rosalie can put her Barbies on it if she wants. She's probably gonna paint this as well because painting is the extent of my crafting abilities at this point. For now. Zach's socks that he got for Christmas, they all came wrapped around these and there was a bunch. So that's like something I'm notorious for is just saving random things to just make stuff out of. Kids love crafts, am I right? Okay, so what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna take these out. Ooh girl, ooh girl, look at that. I have really painfully straight hair, so I feel like a whole nother type of bitch when I have my hair wavy like this, you know what I'm saying? So I have some updates, like I said. There's been some emotional things happening, as I'm sure we can all relate to with this year that has passed. We won't even speak of it. 2020. <laughs> I'm also gonna put some lips on my face. <laughs> what a fox! Yay! Now that I have some lips, it's time for a new fit. I wear this way too much. <laughs> Here we are! This outfit is so cute, am I right? It's from Pretty Little Thing because I know you guys want to know. Yeah, I figured if I put something really saucy on, I'd feel a lot more confident in sharing all of these things I'm nervous to share. Let's put these gongs on and get the party started, am I right? <laughs> Calling all bad bitches. <laughs> but still emotional and sad thing that happened recently. We were going to add a fluffy little friend to the family. Rosalie tried a new food and we told her we'd buy her a pet. That's how desperate we were to get her to try new foods. And so she tried some pancakes, which that has eggs and milk in it. That is a win for us. I mean, that is nutrition that she's not receiving elsewhere because our child is literally so picky. We're not opposed to bribery at this point, We've been trying to bribe her with a pet. And so she tried something new and we took her to the pet store to look at some fish. Rosalie, come see what's over here. Oh, he's so cute. Just take me home. Take me home, please. Take me home. Come on, come on, just take me home. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> she says, I want a kitty so bad. You gotta tell daddy. Daddy want a kitty. <laughs> Me too. I want <laughs> Yeah. What about a fish? What about a kitty? <coughs> yeah, Daddy. What about a kitty? No, Mama shouldn't have brought you. Rose, where are we going? To go meet some kitties. <laughs> you gotta go pee on the potty before we leave. You sure? So I got The first one we saw was Luna, but all I see is I look over and I see a whole lot of this. From Rosalie. A really red eyeball got a little puffy. I think maybe we'll go visit some more kitties and see how the next trip goes and if the same reaction happens. It's safe to assume she's allergic. Cats and dogs. What are we gonna do? Somehow, I miraculously convinced my husband that we need a kitten. And so I was really, really excited because I grew up with two cats of my own. I'm hot, hold on, I gotta turn the fan on. I grew up with two kittens of my own and I loved them dearly. I was so excited for Rosalie to be able to experience the excitement that comes with, and the responsibility that comes with having a pet of your own. Some of you know that we've tried to have a dog in the past and she was like six months old. That didn't work out because I don't know if it was just her age, but it seems like she has an allergy to dog saliva because she broke out in a rash all around her neck. We might foster in the future to try again and see how she reacts, but what happened when we went to look for a kitten, she um, was doing a whole lot of this. Her eyes just looked red. At this first appointment, the severity was pretty low so that I still had my doubts that she had allergies, but we actually drove an hour to another shelter and we met this literally perfect little boy kitten and I swear to you, he was purring the whole time Rosalie was holding him. She wouldn't let him go, but it didn't, like he was still just purring the whole time. And I was quite literally filling out the paperwork to bring him home with us. And I see Rosalie start developing almost like these welts around the corners of her eyes. This is not a good sign. So I asked the workers there, one of them has kids of her own. And so she said, I would take her to the pediatrician and know for sure before you adopt. So maybe sometime in the future, but right now it doesn't seem like pet is in the cards for us, which is so sad. So I may kind of, I literally wrote four pages of my thoughts um, and I'm gonna share some of these things with you. So if I'm reading, that's why. So even though we've experienced some sad things this year, a lot of good has come out of it for me personally. And so I'm not only gonna be talking about sad things, but I'm going to just give you an update and kind of tell you why I was absent for just a little bit. So I really just needed some time to think and rethink and kind of just rekindle my inner bad again. Obviously it wasn't a huge break off of YouTube, but it's cause I can't stay away. I do love to create. I know 2020 has made most of us question everything that we previously felt to be true. I have never once questioned my firm belief in my ability to eventually make YouTube my career until 2020. Ooh. We're past that now and I'm better for it. Isolation has forced a lot of us to look inward for solutions. And can I just tell you, there is nothing healthier or more powerful than taking complete and total responsibility for your life, your physical health, your mental health, and really just your overall perspective on the things going on around you and happening inside of you. When life gives you a dumpster fire like 2020, sometimes you just have to roast some marshmallows on top of that and make the best of it. Am I right? So all I'm saying is that every adversity carries with it the seed of equivalent benefit but it's up to us to plant, water, grow, and nourish that seed. 
So if 2020 is the hardship or the adversity, the seed would have to be being forced to recognize my mindsets and habits that aren't actually beneficial. That is a sign of growth. But that's the beauty of being just human. You can be ever evolving. I can be both depressed and driven. I can be positive, which I am, while simultaneously, sometimes in the same hour or even the same day, I can feel discouraged. Like I said, I had to take some time off, but I promised you I used that time to be really productive and make some really monumental changes in my own habits. But don't think for one second that that progress didn't come with big old struggle and even a slight identity crisis. I've done my best to turn this year around and make it into something positive. Unfortunately, like a lot of us this year, my love for weightlifting and healthy eating in general <laughs> has been totally tainted by this year. Well, last year. It is the first week of January as I film this. So, Happy New Year, y'all. I'm so excited that 2020 is over. <laughs> but with that being said, I've learned a lot. Aside from those things, there's actually been some huge, uncomfortable things that have been going on with me that are much less frivolous than things like getting a pet. And if you're a family member or a male, <laughs> stop watching this video. Skirt! See ya! <laughs> this one isn't for you. This one's for my ladies. Because <laughs> I'm going to be talking about my nether regions. So, see ya! Bye-bye! Bye-bye now! Bye-bye! <laughs> yeah. So, there's a bigger reason that I've taken time off of YouTube, and I'm going to tell you right now. I'm nervous, and the first time I filmed this video, I said I wasn't ready to share it, but the more I edited, I'm like, that's just not me. I think I am ready to share, even though it's embarrassing and hard and super frustrating because I'm someone who takes a lot of pride in exercising my body and treating it right. I mean, mostly right. I do indulge more often this year. This previous year I indulged way more than I should have, but I'm not mad about it. I'm accepting it and I'm not gonna beat myself up. Ring the gong for that one. Okay, okay. So let me just remind you all that I'm still Snatch and I'm still hot. I think, but I have been seeing a pelvic floor specialist for a specific issue that some moms might be familiar with. It's called a prolapse. Super fun. This is when organs, there are a few different organs that it could be, sink too low into the vaginal canal. Yeah. So for me, I'm having a bladder prolapse. <laughs> Which, when I first filmed this video, I couldn't even really reassure you guys because I had no idea how severe it was. I went for about four appointments before I even asked, like, what's the severity level? Because my doctor's so calm, which I love, but it made me think like, oh, everything's probably totally fine because she seems really relaxed and not nervous at all. So that's great, but then I didn't ask. And so I asked on my last appointment, and she said they rate them from a one to a four, and she says I'm just a one. So that's really good. The likelihood that I can heal this pretty easily is very high. So I'm super thankful for that because I asked her, can prolapses actually even be healed fully? And she said, yours I definitely think could. So that's really encouraging. So yeah, um, I think the cause was, well, you can develop a prolapse um, I already knew I had a weak pelvic floor and then I had diastasis recti, which is just a, a separation of the abdominal wall um, that can be a result of pregnancy, which men can get that separation as well. It can occur as a result of unregulated intra-abdominal pressure from heavy lifting. I also had a traumatic birth, which can, well not traumatic, but somewhat, I mean I had a pretty severe tear, and so that can be a cause as well. I think that uh, seeing a pelvic floor specialist or seeing a doctor who has knowledge on the pelvic floor should be an absolute part of the postpartum process. Yeah, don't think for one second that I've got this weak, loose mom JJ because that is not the case. It could not be farther from the truth. Let's just say I've hurt my husband on multiple occasions. Oh my God. And that's on period. Period. 
Actually, I was more emotional about this particular topic than my prolapse, so. Um, here's a trigger warning, miscarriage. Late October marked one year since my miscarriage. And so it actually made sense that I was feeling kind of ready to move on and start trying again. But it was actually crazy because Rosalie was so fixated for some reason on having a baby sister. I don't know why she would not let it go, but for the whole month of October, that's all she was talking about. And so end of October and most of November, Zach and I were actually trying to conceive for a little bit. And it's really hard to talk about because, well, you know Zach and I have been very back and forth on this particular subject for a really long time. He's really in love with the idea of just spoiling Rosalie and Rosalie alone the whole rest of her life, which I totally get and I also love the idea of that, but she's getting so big and when I look at baby pictures of her, I just want another one. Like, I'm telling you, <laughs> she was so cute. She still is so cute, but I swear her freaking rolls. <gasps> I need more. <laughs> After kind of discussing some very private emotions with Zach and other things of that nature, he kind of changed his mind a little bit. So it's been a painful time. Tears were shed. <sighs> I feel like this is so raw and real, but you guys, this is just how I've been feeling. Last year, I lost the idea of one baby, and then I kind of lost the idea of another baby, and now I don't know if that opportunity is gonna come back around. And I struggled a little bit not being angry at him because it was honestly hard when he started having second thoughts that broke my heart a little bit. It's not Zach's fault. I have to respect his wishes as well because this is not his life and my life, it's our life. And so that's just where we're at right now. And it's really hard and I'm kind of sad about it still, but I, if I've been a little bit absent everywhere the past couple months, that is why. There's your answers, I've been sad. <laughs> But just so you know, there's always stuff going on in the background. This is why you should always be kind to people, always. Because you never know what they're going through in silence. And social media is such a highlight reel. A lot of people only show the really good stuff. They're kind of afraid to be real in fear of being judged, which is fine. Everyone has a level of openness. Everyone has their limits. My husband's a super private person, whereas I am not. I mean, I'm private in some ways, but not really. And I don't shy away from the raw and the real and just being authentic. I don't shy away from the difficult topics, especially because if this message can help another woman going through the same thing or a similar thing, then it's all worth it. Even if it helps one woman. In the long run, if you change one person's life or simply brighten one person's day or simply make one woman feel less alone in her everyday struggles, it's worth it. It's worth it. Ta. I am not embarrassed of imperfection or vulnerability. We are all human with human struggles. So I'm gonna come on here and tell you exactly what the heck has been going on while I'm falling. <laughs> it's getting too intense in here, watch out. But I did actually develop a really great routine over the past three months of quarantine. I decided that I was tired of just feeling no type of way every day I wanted structure because when every day is a mirror image of the previous day and nothing changes and everything just feels so blah like isolation and quarantine does in a 900 square foot apartment <laughs> uh, with a toddler it is a freaking joke okay so what I had to do was develop a structure where I started my day off focusing on myself. So I started something called the Miracle Morning Routine. And the structure is, what they call it is the savers, which is silence, affirmations, visualizations, exercise, reading, and scribing, which stands for writing. These are all things I did all the time, but can you imagine if you harness the power of every single one of those things every morning, how your personal development would just skyrocket? 
Yeah, it definitely has. I think my overarching struggle for this year has been really just focusing on things that I don't have. And that kind of lack mindset is never ever healthy. And it's just not conducive to having a happy life in general. Because if you're always focusing on what you're lacking, what you don't have, then how do you expect to see the good when you're only looking for the bad? Hello. <laughs> Especially when you're focusing on the bad and that's all you can see and all you're looking at That'll become all you can think about and focus on. Can I just tell you when I started focusing on only giving my energy to things that I can control and having gratitude for what I do have Everything changed another aspect of 2020 that I've really struggled with is having very limited access to that bad bitch energy that I so fiercely crave and thrive off of I've been blessed to see friends periodically, but y'all, I used to be surrounded by bad bitches. Five days a week, the gym I went to was just crawling with baddies, you know what I'm saying? Being around other strong individuals somehow just fuels me in a way that I just cannot accomplish by myself, nor with a toddler or my husband. <laughs> <laughs> not because they're not inspiring, they feel a lot of why I do what I do, don't get me wrong. So with that being said, I guess here's my 10 second elevator pitch. Calling all women and moms and really any gender you want, as long as you promise to bring that bad bitch energy, who are driven, kind, supportive, inspired ass gals who are looking to collectively come together for world domination in our own various forms. So if you're a boss bitch and you know it, click the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Let's be friends. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. It's a super easy way to interact. It's much easier than uploading to <laughs> YouTube. I'm a lot more active on there way more frequently because YouTube is a freaking job and a half, you guys. You have no idea how many hours I have to put into each and every video. I'm telling you, shit's not for the week. So if you want easier access to chat, well, Instagram and TikTok are a great resource for that. Am I just gonna start swearing on my YouTube channel? I swear, I do. I'm sorry, mom. I think, I think, I think, I would enjoy being on YouTube even more if I could just be exactly who the fuck I am. And who I am is imperfect. And I love Jesus, but I swear a little. And I like to shake my butt. Ugh, God forbid that I move my hips, you know? <laughs> oh my, how real are we gonna get in this vlog? <laughs> am I about to, am I about to, am I about to fuck around and just be myself? What? Okay, well I'm actually very normal, just like you, and I like to sometimes try and be inspirational, but really, I'm more of like your guide. <laughs> I don't want to be the hero, I want to be the guide, helping you become your most healthy and thriving selves. But I want to be the guide in this story, trying to help you be the hero in your story. I am here for you. You guys know that. That's actually the point. So if you could please comment down below and let me know if you enjoy my videos. And if you're in isolation, which you likely are, just know that my heart goes out to you because it's just really hard. We're not meant to do life alone. This year has been painfully challenging. So I just want you guys to know that I feel ya and I'm here for you. Thank you for watching and we'll talk really soon. Love you guys. Bye.